Hey, Sean, I'm gonna answer the question that I got asked more than I ever thought I would. Should you buy this? Now this is the Lawa 24 millimeter macro probe lens. Now, this lens is an incredible lens and it does some incredible things, but the question I've been asked that I, I'm not answering how I thought I would is should you buy it? And I did. I rented it twice and then I decided to buy it when I saw it go on sale a little bit. Um, but in hindsight, I don't know that it was the best move. So let me quickly walk through what I love about this lens, what I don't like about this lens, and whether or not it would be a good decision for you to buy it based on what you do. So right out of the gate, this lens is super unique. It's a 24 millimeter macro, so it's a very wide angle, but it can focus on things very, very close to it. And it can actually be a two to one macro, uh, depending on where you're focusing. And that's just a shot that you don't see a lot of, or didn't see a lot of before everyone started getting this lens. And it lets you do some really, really cool things with food and product photography. It doesn't really serve any practical purpose as far as shooting landscapes or anything that you're not shooting up close. You're not gonna shoot an interview with this lens. You're not gonna uh, go outside and, and shoot animals or anything like that. Like this is for stuff that is set up and, and pretty staged. But when you have a setup like that, this lets you see it like you never could before. And that's added a lot of unique shots Two videos that I've gotten to do for clients. Another great benefit to this lens is that the probe itself is waterproof. And so you've seen people put this lens under water in fish tanks and shoot fluid dynamics and stuff like that. And you can shoot beverages and things like that. But the other advantage to it being waterproof is it just is slightly more durable. And so even though I'm not necessarily plunging this thing underwater, knowing that when I shoot something, if there's dust in the air, I've shot with this in some bakeries and shot baked goods with it, knowing that if flour or powdered sugar gets on the end, if this ends up ramming into a donut, I can just wash it off, rinse it off, and, and I know that I'm not going to mess it up in any way. And that is something that's really, really unique compared to other lenses that, that I would use in that situation. And the last thing that makes this lens really cool is that the, the aperture opens at its widest to f14. And what this means is, that it doesn't let a lot of light in. So the, the drawback there is you need to pour light on your subject. You need to be shooting outside or you need to bring a bunch of light to get a decent shot, otherwise you're gonna have to crank your ISO. And a lot of the stuff that people wanna shoot with this is ends up being slow motion. So you need even more light because your shutter speed is being you know cut down so much. But because of that, the shot that it gives you puts so much in focus, and that's kind of the drawback of some other macro lenses, is you end up having to do focus stacking if you're doing stills, um, or you just can't really use it for video because the background is so blurred so quickly that it's almost distracting. You can't really see what you're looking at. And this really allows you to not only get close and see some detail, but with the context of the background still being a part of your composition. Now, the drawbacks to this lens are essentially its pros. The drawback is this shot is so unique and it's becoming so iconic that you can't use a bunch of them in the same video. If, if you're shooting something uh, for a client and you know they've got, say you're shooting something for a restaurant um, and you shoot a couple shots with this, then it, it so quickly dominates your video where you can say like, oh, here's another snorkel shot. Oh, here's another snorkel shot and it, it gets old quickly. And same thing if you're doing a whole bunch of work for different clients, if every one of your projects includes the one snorkel shot the way you do it, it starts to be a gimmick that, that gets old really quickly and becomes something that you lean on. And so um, while, while again, it is a unique tool, it isn't something that I, I use as much as I thought I would because it's like after you get the one snorkel shot, you got your snorkel shot and, and you can't, you can't do that too much or you're gonna lose people. So its uniqueness ends up being a drawback because it, it does skew on the gimmick side of things. The other thing is because of how far the lens tip is from where your sensor is, any bit of shake becomes so much, so much more magnified. So you can't shoot handheld because 
even if you hold it super steady, the, the end of your lens is gonna be bouncing around so much that your shot's gonna be all over the place. So because of that, this needs to be mounted on something. And if you just mount it on a tripod, you can't, you're, you're limited with what this can do. And, and with, you know, this long probe lens, you can move it through things and that's what makes these shots amazing. But because of that, you need a robot. You need a robotic slider. You can get away with a manual slider, but but that, that smoothness of motion is really, really hard to get uh, routinely with a manual slider. So I use the Rhino and it's nice, but then I only have this in and out motion and I guess I could technically do a parallax, but it's so hard to get the aim just right. And so without some sort of robot or motion control on this, it becomes pretty difficult to get a usable shot that's unique and that's that will actually add value to your project. And so for that reason, I say don't necessarily buy this lens unless you already have a motion control rig that you really like. I like the Jib One that I've seen um, and I'd be interested to see what people do with this on the Jib One. Um, I've seen sort of the extent of what it can do with just mainly pushing in and out with the Rhino slider. You see Steve Geralt using this thing and it's, you know, pivoting everywhere and going crazy and that's awesome, but without a $100,000 bolt, uh, it just doesn't unlock that same potential for people. So unless you're doing a bunch of product photography or close-up stuff, uh, or you've already got a bunch of motion control and you've got a ton of light, you're gonna need a ton of light. Even my 300D on max power is barely enough to power this thing um, when I'm shooting at 120 frames a second with a shutter speed of, of, of one 250th of a second. So it's finicky and it's fragile. If you can get it right, it can give you a killer shot that can enhance a project. But if you don't have a whole bunch of this gear, a whole bunch of light and motion control, you're gonna end up with this lens that you can't really use as much as you maybe thought you would. And you're gonna end up with this really cool looking paperweight. And lastly, this, this other little drawback, I decided to take it to do some photography while out walking with my son. And I felt weird because mounted on my a7 III, it looked like I was carrying a gun around or something. And that made me, I didn't want people to think I was threatening. So I ended up keeping it in the stroller the whole time. And I was sort of really playing it up as I was taking photos so that people would hopefully understand that I wasn't carrying a weapon around. But yeah, that's my review of the lens. It's a really neat lens, but it actually takes a whole bunch to be able to use right. You can't just grab this lens, get some cool shots for your video and be done with it. You're gonna need uh, more than you maybe thought you would. So for that reason, maybe don't spend the 1500, but if you know you've got a couple projects that, that could use it, rent it for those projects. Um, lens Rentals has it, I think most places have it now. Give it a shot, rent it before you invest the 1500 bucks and uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching, see you later, bye. You know it's a shame? I'm gonna time this perfectly. When it starts coming in, I'm gonna pour. And it's gonna be just a shit pour. As, as only I know how to do. I'm calling that it's gonna be on point. Let's talk to him. Talk to him. Nope. Nope.